Welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and today we're talking about the 10 worst habits you can do that expand your waistline, that make us gain weight, that prevent us from losing weight. We're gonna talk about the top 10. So if you're excited, give this video a big, huge thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell notification is turned on because I upload new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Check out the description box down below for nutrition coaching where I offer personalized to you macros and calories. This is how I've lost over 130 pounds as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching if you would like to chat with me directly. Links and discounts to my favorite healthy things are also down in that description box. So let's jump into the 10 worst habits for your waistline. If you've been gaining weight or if your waistline has been expanding and you're not sure what you're doing wrong, these 10 habits that we do almost that we can do on the daily could be the culprit. You just end up digging yourself just a little bit deeper and deeper into that weight gain hole. We might guilt trip ourselves when we indulge into things, or maybe we're enjoying the holiday season a little bit too much, but that is not what's going to cause us to gain weight. That's not the cause of expanding our waistline. It's the things we do on a regular basis, those day-to-day, -day, weekly, monthly habits that have an impact. So today we're going to talk about the 10 that you may be doing that aren't doing your waistline or your weight loss any favors. Habit number one is you eat a low-fat diet. If you didn't know, low-fat diets are out. Fat is good for you. Fat is essential for maintaining a healthy body and even for losing weight. Stop buying foods that are marketed as low fat and fat free. Does fat make you fat? The answer to that question is no. Typically low fat, fat free products have little to no calories. But if you've ever taken a good look at the ingredient label, they are filled with things we don't want to put in our body because companies have to make them taste good so we'll buy them. You're much better off just buying the full fat version of these products. There's generally more sugar, more carbohydrates, and more questionable ingredients in low fat or fat free products. My philosophy is eat the real thing, the full fat thing, just a little bit less of it. Habit number two is you ignore sodium counts. If you didn't know, there is a certain amount of sodium that we're supposed to consume every day that's considered to be healthy. So your favorite trail mix might only have 150 calories, not so shabby for a good mix of protein and healthy fats. But did you take a look at the sodium content? On average, we consume about 56% more sodium than what is recommended. A lot of this excess sodium is going to come from processed foods, fast food, waffles, bagels, cottage cheese, salad dressings. That's where we're going to get an influx of sodium. Salt doesn't make you fat. Sodium doesn't make you fat, but it does make you bloated. And when we weigh ourselves on the scale, the scale only constitutes mass. So it's only going to weigh what's on it. It doesn't understand that some of that mass and that weight comes from added bloat and added sodium. So if we're just mindful of the amount of sodium we're eating every day, we can prevent the bloat, which shows up as weight gain on the scale. You might be wondering how much sodium I am I supposed to have? It is recommended that we consume 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day or less, less being even better. Again, this can help with bloating and can also help with blood pressure. Habit number three is you don't drink enough water. And I can't tell you how many of my coaching clients ask me on the daily, well, how much water am I supposed to be drinking? What's considered healthy? Eight, eight ounce glasses of water or 64 ounces is the minimum amount of water that we should be consuming every day. Now, the more water, the better. I know for me, I shoot for about a gallon a day. I find that to be kind of the sweet spot for weight loss and also keeping myself high. Water is essential for your body's functions and even more essential for maintaining a healthy weight and even seeing that scale go down. In fact, people who drank a cup of water or two cups of water before consuming a meal ate about 30% less in that meal because the water is going to take up space in your stomach, making you consume less per meal. If you want to magnify the effect of water, add a little bit of ice to it. The colder the water is, the more energy our body has to burn, energy equaling calories, to digest and process through that extra cold water water through our system. Just by drinking five, six cups of nice ice cold water every day can help our metabolism burn about 50 extra calories. Now 50 times 10 is 500. So over the course of 10 days, you can burn an extra 500 calories just drinking nice cold water. But also nice cold water is the best kind of water. Habit number four is you eat too quickly. I am definitely, definitely someone who does this or did this in the past. I've really been a lot more mindful of how it, about slowing down my 
my eating and having my meals last a little bit longer. It takes about 20 minutes for our stomach to tell our brain that we're full and satisfied. So if it doesn't take you 20 minutes to eat a meal, you don't give your brain and stomach enough time to connect and that's where we tend to overeat. In fact, people who take about 20 minutes or longer to eat a meal consume about 66 less calories on average per meal. That's three, four, five, six times a day, 66 less calories. Did you know that if you ate 66 less calories per meal, you'll, you'll easily lose 20 pounds in the course of a year? 20 pound weight loss from just slowing down your eating. Habit number five is you are a culprit of eating off of big, large dinner plates. Now back in the day, dinner plates were like salad plates. Now our dinner plates are huge. And when we eat off of big plates, our mind thinks that we need to fill that big plate. For me, I always eat off small plates doesn't matter the meal, it's off of a small plate. I look at that plate and it looks full of food even though it's substantially less than if I would have put it on a big dinner plate. 98.6 of obese individuals eat off of large plates. If that isn't a sign that eating off of a large plate may not be the healthiest for you, I don't know what is. Keep your portions in check by simply choosing a smaller dish. The next habit is you order the combo meal when you're out to dinner. When you're frequenting your favorite drive through restaurant, the combo meal is pretty alluring. It's a much better deal. I mean, you get a sandwich, you get a fry, you get a drink, but ordering the combo meal isn't good for your waistline. You can pick up about 100 extra calories just by ordering the combo meal rather than going a la carte. When we order meals bundled together, we generally order more food than we really even want or definitely more food than our body needs. You're better ordering piece by piece and paying a little bit extra. That little bit of savings isn't going to help your waistline. And when our waistline grows, we need to go buy new clothes, which definitely isn't a savings. Say, spend a few extra cents out of your pocket to stop gaining weight and to help your waistline overall. The next habit is you drink soda, even diet soda. This can wreak havoc on our weight loss. Even diet soda is not good for us. Did you know that the average American guzzles almost a full gallon of soda? every single week. Drinking two sodas a day increases your risk of being obese by over 33%. That includes diet soda. In fact, people who drink two or more diet sodas every single day. Watch their waistline increase five times faster than those individuals who don't consume soda at all. The artificial sweeteners in diet soda trigger our appetite cues. Our body doesn't know what those artificial sweeteners are. So when we consume them, our body craves more sugar, which generally means that we eat more sugar throughout the day to compensate for what that artificial sweetener does to our brain and our body. If you can ix your soda habit or really reduce it, that's going to be the best for your waistline. The next habit is you try extreme diets. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. If you've ever hopped on the low carb or the paleo or the Octavia bandwagon, these are fast fad diets that don't work. Sure, they might work in the short time, but they are 100% not sustainable long-term. They don't allow for balance, moderation, or a healthy lifestyle. They can be dangerous and really give us nutritional deficiencies, which can have long-term effects on our health. You're probably going to get real bored with a restricted plan, and when we restrict or eliminate foods or food groups, it's the number one cause of binge eating disorder. So don't set yourself up for failure by following these fad diets, taking off a lot of weight, and then gaining it all back and then some within about six months. That's the average, you guys. That's the average, my friends. Fad diets lead to gaining weight even more than you lost in the first place in less than one year. So skip the fad diets and find something that's healthy and sustainable for you forever. Habit number nine is you eat when you're emotional and this can be happy, sad, mad, bored, you're an emotional eater. Emotional eaters, those that eat in times of emotion. And again, this could be whether you're happy, you're sad, you're bored, you're angry. You are more likely by 13 times to be overweight or obese than people who aren't emotional eaters. If you feel the urge to eat in response to stress, Try chewing a piece of gum, chugging a glass of water, or doing something else. Whether that's taking a walk, moving your body, reading a book, find something to do that takes your mind off of food. Create an automatic response that doesn't involve food, and within a short period of time, you can make it so you're no longer an emotional eater. I can't tell you how many coaching clients I have that this is the reason that they are overweight, is they are an emotional or stress eater eater. By, by focusing on these little tips and tricks, you can alleviate that habit and turn it into a much healthier one overall. And habit number 10 may come as a bit of a surprise, and this is you eat free restaurant food. Breadsticks, biscuits, 
loaves of bread, chips and salsa, all of the things that come free as part of a meal out can really wreak havoc on your waistline. Every time you eat Olive Garden's breadsticks or Red Lobster's Cheddar Bay biscuits, you're adding about 150 additional calories to your meal. Eat three of these over the course of a dinner, which is real easy to do, you're adding an additional 450 calories to that meal. And it's already a calorically dense meal to begin with. And P.S. that 450 calories, that's about the amount of calories in that basket of chips at your local Mexican restaurant. None of these things have any nutritional value. They are all just junk food. That's why they're free food at restaurants. Skip them. Ask your server not to bring them to your table if you have a hard time not reaching for them, but skip them. Focus on your meal and getting your calories from more nutritionally dense foods. Those are the top 10 worst habits that we do on a regular basis for our weight loss and our waistline. There's some more habits that I have. If you're interested in hearing more, let me know down in the comments. And also, what is a habit that you found that you did that didn't benefit your weight loss? Share it with the community. We would love to hear it. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a big thumbs up. Again, make sure you're subscribed because I upload new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Don't forget to check out the description box down below for nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things, to my favorite healthy things. And again, leave your comments down below if you wanna see a little bit more, if you wanna see a few more habits that don't benefit our weight loss. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.